Hi, I'm Gary Slater of Helix. We're the Bell Independent Representative for the UK and Ireland. We're going to be doing a series of short videos to introduce you to this, the Bell 505, and explain some of its great features and how easy it is to live with on a daily basis. Welcome to the first video in the series where we'll be looking at this, the 505, and where it came from. In order to do that, we need to look at its DNA, which came from here, the Bell 206. Bell created the single turbine fight place market with the 206 Jet Ranger. It was in production for over 50 years, with millions of fly hours. If you're a pilot, like myself, it's like putting on your favourite slipper. It's a great aircraft to fly, but she is 50 years old. If we look down the 206, you'll see that there are some DNA design cues carried forward to the 505. The fin, the tail boom, tail rover drive shaft cover, all look similar on the 505. They're not the same. Probably the biggest thing is the rotor system, two-bladed teetering head. Now it's not from the Jet Ranger, it's from the, the L4 Long Ranger. So the L4 Long Ranger, as you probably know, seven place aircraft, you can take seven people, reasonable fuel, and it performs very well. But if you take that rotor system and put it on this 505, which is much lighter, you start to get an idea of how well this aircraft's gonna perform. So welcome to the cabin of our 206 Jet Ranger. So, one of the first things people always think about is the 505 seems more complicated because it's glass cockpit, dual fade deck, etc. But if we just look into that a little bit, if we look to the top, there are lots of circuit breakers, lots of switches all the way forward. And we come down the screen, we have a GPS on the top of the instrument panel, be a pretty old one. Uh, moving downwards, lots of warning lights, a lot of instruments on the analog instrument panel. And moving down we have radio, VOR, ADF, transponder. All of this has been tidied up in the 505 and you'll see when we move over, all this is gone, this is gone, and we're now just looking at two glass screens. So there is always that worry of, I'm going from analog to glass, I'm not too sure how that's, how that's gonna work. But let's just look at a few of the things that make glass easier. Now if we were in a confined area in this Jet Ranger with five of us on board and some fuel and we needed to take off we may need to go in to take off power. Now as on this 206 a lot of these instruments are quite small and some even have dual needles. Now if we were focusing on torque for instance because we're heavy and it's hot and we've got to come out of the hotel to go from our five minute power rating which is from 85 percent to 100 percent for five minutes it's all done by eye, so we know that we're coming into the five minute limit because we're watching, but we're also watching out the window to make sure we're clear of the obstacles. This is actually so much easier in the 505. It has an audible warning and a visual warning that you're using takeoff power. And should you exceed the takeoff power, you'll get a second warning to tell you you need to lower the lever. So these are all really good cues that give you more time to look out the window rather than stare at a talk meter. And another good feature, so on any turbine helicopter, torque, TOT, N1 are your limiting factors. You have to work out which one that is. It, you could be hot and high, you could be heavy, and you need to work out which one will run out of puff first. In the 505 we have one gauge, power situation indicator, which we'll show you when we move over to the aircraft. The, the aircraft will work out its limiting factor and give you 100% of something all the time. So you find that you spend less time looking at instruments and gauges than you do looking out the window, which is what you should be doing. Also, there are lots and lots of instruments to look at, and you'll find on glass it's a lot more simplified. A couple of other examples, this is a really old Area Nav VOR, common in a lot of 206s. The VOR is now incorporated into the screen. The COM is now incorporated into the screen transponder down here all incorporated so a lot of this is much tidier and much easier to use
Another great feature of the 505, it's dual FADEC. Now FADEC controls your start, your fuel flow, RPM, everything. This, as we know, the 206, is all manual. So I'm just going to try and show you why that's easier in the 505. So if we were starting this Jet Ranger up, once we've got battery on and we're happy that everything's ready to go, we hit the starter button, we wait for more than 13% M1, so that's one gauge to look at. We then open the throttle at the appropriate time. We monitor TOT to make sure we stay within limits. If we don't, we've got to control that. Once the TOT is stabilized, we need to go back to M1 to release the starter at 58%. So there's a lot of looking at different instruments while you're in the start process, while still holding one finger on the starter button and one finger ready to close the throttle should it all go wrong. With the 505, there's none of that. You get in, when you're ready to go, you press one button. The fade it will take control of the start all the way through, disengage the starter, and complete the, the whole cycle on its own. It's so much easier. One thing we all know about the 206, the rear cabin isn't the best. There is a bulkhead, there is some structure here, and if you're over six foot like I am, and you're sitting in the back in the middle, well, I'll show you what that looks like. So here we are in the back, in the middle, being over six foot. As you can see, not the best seat in the house. Um, Visibility is not great. So this was one of the things we wanted to improve on the 505. So this bulkhead has gone, the rear cabin is much more open, which will show you the same picture when we move over to the 505. So here we are at the 505. One of the first things you'll notice is the cabin. There's more glass, there's more cabin space compared to the 206. Great visibility from every seat in the aircraft now. Moving backwards, one of the things you'll notice there's no panels to open on this for the pre-flight inspection. We are gonna do a separate video for pre-flight which we'll go into in more detail. On the 206, there's four panels per side to open plus oil systems you break into. We don't have any of this, it's all on sight glass, so there's less risk of leaving an oil system open or a cowling open. Moving to the rear, as we spoke about previously, you can see that DNA in the rear end of the 505, the thin tail boom, drive shaft cover. For the main one, moving up to the Long Ranger L4 rotor system, or straight from the L4. Moving downwards, great boom on this aircraft. Got enough for your golf clubs, luggage, anything you're going to take away for your customers or for yourself. So as we can see, plenty of room. So here we are on the port side of the 505. We have this second door here that we can open so you get this great cabin access. Every seat on this 505 is a crash worthy seat. So should the worst happen, they're all stroking seats, which you don't get on the 206. Another great feature, we can take all of these seats out, including this co-pilot seat and the dual controls. The carpet can come out, it's all pilot function, it's not engineering. And that will give you this huge cargo space should you need to move something other than passengers. So it's another really great feature. Flat floor, as opposed to the curved dish on the 206. No bulkhead, no restrictions in the, in the cabin between the seats. A much more open cabin. Welcome to the cabin of the 505. So some differences you'll notice straight away. A much bigger cabin, great visibility, no bulkheads, more room between you and the co-pilot. Moving up, none of the circuit breakers and switches are there. We have a rotor brake, we have a fuel cutoff. Moving down the panel, this is our standby compass. Coming on to the instrument panel, so the first thing we notice, no gauges, it's all glass. So here is our primary flight display, and this is our multifunction display. So we'll just run through a few of the basics on the screens. We are going to do a more in-depth video on how to use the Garmin 1000s. So looking through from the standby, we have our barometric pressure, airspeed, altitude, artificial horizon, and balance ball. Now these are here that should we get a total power failure and we lose both screens, we still have those to get home on. Moving down the screens, we have our heater controls, panel lights, intercom, 
And you'll notice that there's no transponder, no VOR down here. There is a standby comm in this particular 505, but everything else is built into the screen, which we'll go to in just a few moments. But here are the switches that you get in the 505 compared to the 206. So we have our battery, our generator. This is to transfer information from one screen to the other, which we'll get into. Anti-coal, position lights, pito heater. That's pretty much the pilot interaction that we have. Here is our master for start. So you can see on here, it's off. 12 o'clock position is start run. We are going to run through a start procedure in, in a few moments and we will do a video on an actual startup procedure. But compared to the 206, it's push, turn to the 12 o'clock position, hold for two seconds, take your hands off. This is the beauty of FADEC. Moving back up to the screens, so if we look in the top left corner, we have, here's our VOR. This is our COM, which negates the need to have them down here. Our airspeed is displayed here as a ticker tape. Altitude is here. Vertical speed indicator here with your arrow here. This is our barometric pressure. HSI, inset of the moving map. Here we have our power situation indicator, which I have got on our second screen larger, which we're going to run through in a few moments. Our transponder is in here. We press transponder, we hit code, put whatever code we've been asked to put in by air traffic. Doesn't need the box in the pedestal panel. And here is our artificial horizon and our balance ball. So although it initially looks like there's a lot of information, it's actually much easier than looking at lots of individual gauges. Here is our warnings. Currently engine is out, which is why that we have warnings up at the moment, and are also displayed on this screen as also. Moving over to the multifunction display, if we were in a normal flight at the moment, we would be displayed more like this. So we have our moving map here, our terrain is on the bottom profile here, negates the need to have the GPS on the top. What we want to talk about at the moment is that similar scenario that we had in the 206. So we're in a confined area, five passengers, in this we could be full fuel and in this particular aircraft, the 505, you wouldn't be short on power, it has so much power. But looking at this, here is our torque, MGT, which is TOT in the 206, NG, N1 in the 206. So we still have our three instruments we spoke about in the 206. And we were talking about if we were short of, in a very confined area, and we wanted to use our five minute takeoff power. In the 206, it's that small torque gauge, and you're looking for that bit where you go into the yellow band which you're controlling. If we go into this five minute limit on our power situation indicator, the aircraft will give us a five minute warning countdown timer in the screen, plus a gong will go off on the headset. So you know you're in your five minute limit. Should you exceed that five minute limit, either by more power that you're pulling or by time, you'll get a second audible warning and you know you have to lower the lever. What this power situation indicator is telling you is it will give you 100% of something all of the time, whether that's torque, MGT, or NG. It will work out its first limiting factor. Whichever's limited will go into the box. It's doing that for you, so you don't have to think, well, we're hot today, we're heavy. You just focus on you have from zero to 100% all of the time, which makes your life a lot easier and you can spend more time looking out the window for takeoff, which you should be, and staring at a gauge to make sure you don't go over that 100% marker. Your engine and te transmission temperatures and pressures are displayed here. Here we have our amps, our volts, our fuel flow, fuel quantity displayed also as a ticker tape. So you find that everything is a lot easier to find and look at and it's more of a glance and having to look at lots of small instruments with your indicators. Overall you'll find that your workload is reduced and there's more time focusing on what's outside the screens. As we mentioned previously, we are going to do a, an additional video of the more intricate operations of the Garmin 1000, so we can run you through what all the switches do, where the pages are, so you get a better idea of what's going on. We're also going to do another video of a startup once we're outside. But for now, we're just going to talk through that start process cause, so we can compare it directly to the 206. As we mentioned, this is a dual FADEC aircraft, so it is going to control the start for you. There is no more holding buttons in, twisting throttles. This aircraft doesn't have a throttle. This is just a handhold now. Your throttle is this button here, and it's fly or idle. 
you can start this aircraft up in fly or in idle, it doesn't matter. But let's assume we're outside and we're going to do the start so we can compare it to the 206. Once we're untied and we're happy that we're good to go, all you do is push and engage this button here, turn it to 12 o'clock where it says start run, count to two seconds, take your hand off. The fade it will kick in, it will light the aircraft up, it will disengage the starter at the right time, everything done for you automated. This removes the risk of hot starts, hung starts, everything that you could potentially get wrong on the 206 is controlled by the fader on this aircraft. It makes your life so much easier. Talking about startup and shutdown, we'll show you more on the video when we do it. When you land in this aircraft and you're ready to shut down, it's only a 30 second rundown period as opposed to two minutes on the 206. I know that's not a great big feature, but at the end of a long day, it's, uh, it's certainly a bonus. When we looked at the 206, we sat in the back middle seat, just to show you that it's not the best seat in the 206. In this aircraft, it's actually the best seat in the, in the helicopter. So we do the same exercise, I'll get in and we'll see what the differences are. It's night and day. I mean, from here, the, the forward visual look is, is superb. Great visibility looking forward, it's almost better than sitting in the front. It's a really, really nice place to be in the back. And as we said previously, all seats are crashworthy seats. The main thing to take away from this, everything you love about your 206 is in here. It's just so much better at everything. It's a fabulous helicopter.